Joey Madrillas, it's your geezer, Big Donny Cal here, for a brand new video where today I am going to be talking to you guys about whether or not you should play Lost, I mean, Last Epoch, Last Epoch, let's not get the name confused, as so many of us do, <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's a thing in your friend groups, but it certainly is a thing in mine, so, um, yeah, let's get into, why should you play Last Epoch, so to start, for those of you who don't want to watch a long, massive video, I'm going to give you a brief summary. Um, do I think you should play Last Epoch? Yes. Great game. Affordable price. Very, very fun. If you're an ARPG fan, definitely get into it. If you like Diablo 3, go for it. If you like Path of Exile, go for it. You know? Um, of course, you know, it's somewhere in the middle of that. So, yeah, don't take take that with a pinch of salt. The difficulty is in between Diablo 3 and Path of Exile. But it's a great game, really fun, it's keeping me engaged, and I'm loving it. So now, I want to just quickly go into some more detail. I want to start with the negatives, because this is a mostly positive review of a game. The negatives are actually quite little, and uh, to be honest, the bulk of my complaints really just come from, like, the early period of the game, which, you know, by the time most people will be watching this, doesn't really exist. But I'm still going to go over it anyway, as history can sometimes repeat itself, and I do think it's important to take some considerations here. So the main negative I've had is the server issues. Now, with this being an indie company, um fully expected server issues but what i gotta say to give these guys some credit yeah although for the first few days it was very difficult to transition to different zones actually get into the game um there were some queues i gotta say as we're currently recording server issues just they barely even exist you know you you might get like five minutes in a day where it's like oh by the way there is a queue it's like ah oh, okay 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 whatever but as of now no servers are stable um so what was the problem really not much i can't really complain about the servers this might be the first time that i played for a game had server issues and been like you know what fair enough it's not anywhere near as bad as Lost Ark's launch, for example, backed by Amazon, yeah? This is an indie company doing better than a company backed by Amazon, okay? Like, Lost Ark, I couldn't even play the game for the first few days. Last Depok, straight in. Even World of Warcraft has had much worse server issues than Last Depok has had. And considering, as I say, indie company, Fair play to 11th Hour Games. They've done a great job with Last Epoch. And the best thing I have to say is the devs were so communicative on the Discord. Like, if you want to know status updates on what's going on, if there's issues going on, then in the news channel, in the Last Epoch Discord, they tell you. They keep you up to date. And, like, it's even something simple as, oh, by the way, guys, we're working on it. Like, we, we are doing this. It's like, great! Thank you! Like, this is the communication we need from devs globally. Like, when, when we hear just radio silence, it's like, well, do the devs know that this is happening? Uh, are they actually working on it? Like, what, what what's going on? And like, yeah, yeah, they are working on it, but it's like, people want that confirmation. It's good, and I think they should be a lesson to other companies lots of great communication from the uh, last epoch team and to be honest server issues weren't even that bad like pretty much fine now in the positives of the game so the game itself it, it it's an arpg you know you've got your campaign you go for the campaign and you've got your end game content you blast through that you've push your build to the max, killing as many enemies as possible, uh, going along a progression system. Now, progression system, 
Path of Exile, for example, it's not infinite, but you can add so much to it that it's still going to be challenging for the majority of the player base. Diablo 3, it, it goes up infinitely. Well, actually no, it does stop at Greater Rift 150, doesn't it? Well, either way, last epoch, it keeps going up and up and up. When you get to Empowered Monoliths, you can add Corruption, which just increases difficulty but increases the rewards and you can just keep pushing yourself as far as you want to go um so i'd i'd say that aspect quite enjoyable being able to push your build to its absolute max great in terms of builds i gotta say i think the builds in last epoch so far are feeling much more fun and interesting than the ones in both Diablo 3 and Path of Exile. I think they've definitely got much more enjoyable classes, much more enjoyable skills, and much more enjoyable builds. The way that you can interlink all your passives and whatnot, I think is great. Of course, I'm a bit more biased on what I think is good, because, you know, I like Warlocks, you know, I play Demolock in WoW, I play loads of Necromancers as well, I like all the dark magics and whatnot. And I do feel that PoE does sort of lack that theme for me, at least in the meta. And I know for a fact, like, I still want to do a summoner build in Last Epoch and compare how they are in both PoE and Last Epoch. But I gotta say, the summoner build that doesn't have Animate Guardian is an absolute W to me. I hate that spell so much. <laughs> but. Yeah, I've been playing the Bleed Warlock build in Last Epoch, and I have found it a ton of fun. It's interesting. You get quite a few active abilities you've got to use. You've got a bit of a rotation, which, honestly, I don't feel like I have that in Path of Exile. And, yeah, there's kind of one in Diablo 3 as well. But what I like is... It's more, you get to make far more interactions with your build in Last Epoch. You've got loads of different uniques, you've got loads of different set items, you've got loads of craftable rare and exalted items, you've got skill trees for all, well, you've got skill trees for up to five abilities, which, by the way, you can actually skill an ability that isn't even on your bars because it's triggered by another ability. Awesome concept in my opinion. So, just like in PoE, you can have more than what you're pressing. Uh, of course, you don't have the same quantity of skill gems and whatnot, but most of your gems in PoE anyway are like support gems, so... I'd say it's a similar level of uh, building your character's abilities up. Um, you get a lot of stat interactions which can increase the levels of your abilities and you get a passive skill tree for your class as well with your ascendancy which you can also tap into uh, talent points on the other ascendancies even if you're not that ascendancy which I find quite an interesting concept um, so yeah I gotta say very interesting what you can do with your passives and whatnot in terms of gearing so I know Elephant in the room. Crafting. What's it like? I gotta say, going through this game, I don't think there's been a system I've encountered which I haven't been utterly confused by. Or if I have, there's been very clear, easy resources to follow. I don't feel like I need a PhD like I do in Path of Exile. And I don't feel utterly bored and face rolling it like I do in Diablo 3. It's a good balance in the middle. Crafting is... Okay, a bit RNG, but you know what? If it wasn't RNG, you'd get all your gear instantly, and like, what would be the reason to play? So, I think the RNG of your crafting is welcome. It's not like in Lost Ark, where you sit there, you press upgrade, fail, upgrade, fail, upgrade, fail, upgrade, fail, upgrade, oh yeah, success. Like, no, it's quick. You, you always upgrade, but it's more the amount of upgrades you can do can be diminished. And there's lots of variation in how you can craft your gear. It's very much up to personal preference. 
if you think that you need I don't know, more cold resistance on a ring, well, boom, you can throw that on. You get two prefixes and two suffixes, and you can also use, I think, some runes and glyphs to, like, add an extra stat or whatnot. And you've got your base items as well, which have their own stats. So, yeah, there's a lot of variation, but by no means is it too complex to get into. It's not like you've got to farm essences and catalysts and go to Dells and stuff like you do in PoE. It's like, no, everything you need drops in all forms of gameplay. So, yeah, I'd say the crafting, very fun, very engaging, very interesting, and very easy to get into. Now, in terms of end game, which is going to be the last point I'm really going to cover in this video. Um, good. It's good fun. One thing I will say is spamming the echoes uh, in the monoliths do get a little bit repetitive. But i got to say, the gameplay loop of it is very, very fun in monoliths. Because you get frequent boss fights. And I think that's something that is... Uh, a bit lacking in the other RPGs, like sure in Diablo you complete a rift and oh there's a boss at the end, but the mechanics aren't really engaging at all. Last Epoch, you get some decent mechanics to run, and I'd, I'd compare the Last Epoch bosses more similarly to PoE bosses to be honest, as you get some mechanics you get to run. They're not really over the top, and I, I personally have been finding all the mechanics quite well telegraphed and quite enjoyable for us making the boss fights and really welcome asset to the game. On top of doing monoliths as well, you can also run dungeons. Dungeons are quite fun to be fair. Just pretty much go in, kill stuff, get to the end boss, big encounter, and it's quite fun. I've done one dungeon so far, like the Zaba, and the boss fight in that was incredible really fun had a unique mechanic in there which i'm not going to spoil for you i think you should go in and find it out for yourself but if you do want to spoil it well look at that like there's information out there as i told you i just want to make sure the people who want to sort of discover for themselves get that opportunity i don't want to deprive such an experience as honestly i've had a great time discovering a lot of this for myself but yeah, I do think that uh, these boss fights are really fun. And I can't wait for more, honestly. I can't wait for when they do some seasonal stuff as well. I'm really looking forward to seeing how my gameplay is going to change in the end game. And I do think that we're going to get more story to come as well. So, all in all, back to this face. Do I recommend that you play Last Epoch? As I said in the summary, yes. Great game, really enjoyable, and honestly, I think anyone can get into it. You can even go and make your own builds, and like, it's not that bad. Just, that, like, understand the game a bit. Once you understand that, go back and start making your own builds. I wouldn't really recommend doing it off the get-go, as I've seen some mates doing it, and uh, we've had some calls trying to fix their gear from crafting, which, honestly, quite easy, and it was fixable and salvageable. Uh, but like, if you're on your own, and you're not very confident, then maybe do a build that someone's already made before, learn the game, and then go back and do your own which is my personal approach to the game. But yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. Uh, I think for the next three or four days, there's going to be some Last Epoch Twitch drops. So if you're interested in the game or you do play, then please come and check out the Twitch stream in the link down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. All right, guys, have a great day.